down at the beach. The tide is going out, so I'll have a nice long walk. I've just administered uh, a dose of marijuana, so I'm going to sit here for another half hour or so, maybe, and uh, then we'll begin the hike in that direction. Down this way. Probably a nice three to five hour amble to the Columbia Beach area, where I will scuttle back to inland and catch the bus home. My mind wanders back to bullies I have known and bullying that I have experienced uh, throughout my life. It's strange, actually. It's interesting to me where I experienced bullying and where I didn't because I, I never experienced bullying in school, probably because I excelled to some degree. I had a slight amount of bullying, one of my friends, because he was just jealous that... I had a few friends that got jealous that I was doing well at school, and I might have been jealous too, and... I don't know. I don't blame people for that. They didn't necessarily bully me. Um, in fact, I, it was just something I couldn't control. I didn't know how I was hurting them by doing my schoolwork. But early in life, I guess, I got introduced to how people feel when you're an intelligent person. It could be an intelligent person. It could be any number of things. No matter where I am in life, no matter what walk of life I walk, there always seems to be people who are dedicated to disliking me. No matter where I go. And the ones that befriend me of those people, they become the bullies. And it's interesting to me where and where I was not bullied. Because in school, I was largely left alone. And if you could say that school is a safe place to begin with. And I was bullied at home. By my father and my sister. And now and then by my older brother, who got worse as he got older. My younger brother just doesn't care about anybody. So he doesn't care enough to get terribly involved one way or the other. He's a chiropractor in California. And, you know, we could talk about what kind of mind it takes to be a chiropractor. And I think he dabbles in kinesiology, which is at least some credit to his name. I'm happy about that. And he's married to a real estate agent, so take that in for a second. They help manage the royal estate. And the thing about professions, and no less or more so-called real or royal estate, is that they require that your brain be in an extraordinary state of repression in order to advance in that profession. Always is the case. Always is the case. Always is the case. This is not an accidental correlation. But uh, some of the nicest people I ever knew became some of the most violent people I ever knew. Because relationships reveal layers to the mind. Right? Relationships reveal layers to the mind.
And I'd be hard pressed to think of someone that I've ever been close to that didn't become violent with me and suffer from violent lapses in comprehension and empathy because something rubbed them in a, to, in a raw way. Right. Even with my mom today, whom I live with uh, right now, the only family member I have left in the world, and who I would say that she suffers from alcoholism and sociopathy that runs through our family, but I don't think she really suffers from it. Not the way I do. <laughs> from her illness. Not the way I've watched my siblings suffer from it. But she can't talk about that. I've lived my whole life around people who can't think properly and don't have the capacity for moral reasoning for how our whole body responds to life and how we make use of that how it becomes distributed through ourselves, through our bodies, and out through the world around us. Everyone is engaged in the distribution of their repressed pain. And the distribution of their beliefs around the activities which they do. I say people who jog avidly. I have a sister who jogs. My mom jog. I know people who, you know, like to run marathons. I know people who have run marathons their whole life and now have major physical illness. But what running does is increase adrenaline, and that's a neuro juice. And the brain, when it's in pain, needs neuro juices. And as you get older, it needs to supplement those neuro juices, right? I took to academics in school because I was supplementing the neurojuice by getting the neurojuice of success in the illegitimate profession of being a student in an institutionalized school of any kind. I was getting that drug. So let me please freely admit to that drug addiction. So if you're out there and, and having introduced this video by talking about how well I did at school and how proud I was of it in a sense, but in context it was the only thing I had to be proud of and I was terrified about everything else in my life. And everything else about school except performing academically, which ter terrified me the least. So let's put it in context. And it uh, helped me supply myself with a neuro juice. And that's how people learn to work, right? There's a neurochemical factor to the conditioning that we get. And the sociopaths I met always have a huge... What is that sound? Oh, they're waiting to cross the road. Um, his uh, little boy is just yelling aimlessly. I shouldn't let it annoy me. I don't want to become an asshole who doesn't like the sound of children. It's just that I'm making a video and they're coming up from behind me. We'll talk more about neurojuices. Dr. Arthur Janoff is a doctor who has written quite well on neurojuices. Why you get sick and how you get well. The guy who did the primal therapy. I've met runners and they're like, yeah, you know, like, I mean, they are dealing with their life by generating what amounts to a, a glorified sedative. 
in their body that supplements all the other neurojuices that have been tasked with repressing their pain, which is the force who, of how life is actually left and the actual impressions of life upon the body, upon the brain development, upon everything. Everything that's meant to occupy the life of man, every capacity, every aptitude, every sexual, emotional, mental development, all of which has been injured in the psychopath that everyone is bred to be. Any of whom can be the nicest people you ever met. If you met my dad, be the nicest person you ever met. If you met my mom, it'd be the nicest person you ever met. And she has friends that would be the nicest people you ever met. So I grew up with the nicest people you'd ever meet. And now at 44, I've diagnosed all of them with psychopathy. I've diagnosed the world with psychopathy. So if you're new to my channel, then it would be fair to deduce that something rather catastrophic entered into the experience of my life. Did that catastrophe... Is that catastrophe wrong? Is it wrong how people respond to that catastrophe? No. And I bet you grew up with people whose personalities changed at some point, and it wasn't wrong that their personalities changed. In fact, it made perfect sense to you that their personalities changed. Before you had the words, before you read books on psychology or whatever, lots of people saw changes, changes that made sense to them, and changes which later became dangerous or not as beneficial to other people as they were to that particular person. And, and as you follow the tributary of these trauma-based changes, which are natural, powerful, absorbed through the whole personality, absorbed by the surrounding society, because you can fit in a lot of aberration in the gangs that we're conditioned to want to join. Right? Military units. It's all, it's all very nice. Right? It's all planned to be. They've written books about how nice it would be. Okay, If you want to read those books, that would matter to you. Right? You don't want to take the blush off the rose. I know the world is just such a beautiful, happy place. It's amazing that we have the schools and the teachers and the doctors and everyone's trying to like, you know, de-sex everyone so that we don't really have to worry about sexuality anymore. We could just, it would just be like a sticker you wear in your anus, like a scratch and sniff. Oh, you're a peppermint strawberry. Lovely. I'm a golden halo of minx delight. Let's rub our stickers together. Hmm. Would you like to procreate with me? Oh, wait, we don't have the anatomy or the will for that. I better keep some cisgender, cisgendered white privilege motherfuckers around somewhere. What about that guy? He's making a video on a bench. He's got long hair, he's got a nice white shirt. Ooh, eyes of steel. Let's get him and the ugliest fucking panda we can find. Well, perhaps I'll leave you for now. I've got some walking to do and the sun just came out.